Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Eric. And I'm Josh. And uh, since FPV has been getting very popular, uh, originally when we started out, there was only really one option. That was dragging your TV out. Yep. Or oh, we're getting really creative, like uh, you and Peter did an awesome FPV box. Solution, yeah, didn't you? exactly. We put a TV, a little smaller monitor inside of a ground station box, and then, you know, eventually added yeah. goggles and all that stuff later. But My first set of goggles were our Vision 922s, and uh, they worked really good, but they had some, some bad parts. They yeah. blocked out light, things like that. Mm -hmm. Since then, uh, things have been changing. Yeah. And, uh, rapidly. Very rapidly, and we love flying with Fat Sharks uh, yep. of all different brands and styles. I love the attitudes. They also have the Dominator HDs now, which have the DVR. Phenomenal, but those are upwards of five hundred dollars. Yeah, and I'm a Cinemizer guy, and I think I paid like eight ninety nine for mine when those yeah. first came out. So, and I love them, and I fly with them all the time. But yeah, I mean, super yeah. expensive. Yeah, and uh, but unfortunately, the break there was you either spend you know anywhere from uh, four hundred on up, or you go to, to Hobby King, and mm -hmm. they have a great little unit for about forty bucks. And uh, that doesn't include your video transmitter or anything like that, but sure. it's these awesome little foam goggles. That's it wonderful. It looks like a box. It looks like a box. strap right around and it's just, yeah. Exactly. So there's not something in the middle. Um, since then, Headplay has come out with a new solution that we're going to go ahead and check out. And this is kind of special because uh, you can see this has kind of been beat up a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's not too many of these around. This is a uh, production model yeah. that uh, GetFPV sent us yeah. to check Almost out. Almost like a last prototype before they went to the real thing, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but this most a lot of the features that the uh, the $39 uh, goggles just simply did not have. Yeah. And uh, that's with the video transmitter, 32 channels, four different bands. Yep. Um, this prototype has blue screen issues, but they've assured us that the future models are not going to. Yeah. So we had to, to be careful when we we're flying not to have blue screen. Uh, but the comfort and everything was really cool. That was the first thing I noticed. I, I was actually just going to say that. The, the, the comfort of these things, they have this padding. It's like a, it feels like it's five inches thick, but it is just awesome. I mean, when you put it on it just it yeah. really forms and there's zero light leak. I mean, it's it's really comfortable. It is by it. far the most comfortable, awkward looking goggle I've ever worn. Ever. Ever. But you know what? We're not really ex uh, experts in this. This is a completely different unit. This has a monitor. Sure. With a, uh, what do they call that? Yeah, I don't know the exact name of it um, yeah. or the term, but there's almost like a little magnification screen inside of there um, that kind of magnifies and sets the screen at the yeah. right distance for your eyes. Exactly. So. Exactly. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's a different experience. And one thing that wouldn't be fair is when you're taking four or five $500 goggles and comparing them to something that's price pointed about 250 sure to do it but we went a wonderful gentleman didn't we while yeah. we were in Utah yeah Carson um, we met Carson at the uh, Utah University um, we were doing a steam event there um, and and they he and his dad drove down to, to hang out with us and it was really cool flew with him for two or three days over the weekend amazing gentleman amazing family yeah they really are and uh, Carson flies on those uh, the the hobby king the little 30 or 40 dollar yeah. hobby king goggles and so since we are the ones using fat sharks and cinemizers and all that we thought it would be really cool if Carson could take his goggles and then compare them to this type of a box, which would be, you know, basically an upgrade. Are you guys gonna pop them in the air? All right, yeah. I'm gonna pop in the air as soon as, uh... there we go, <laughs> and we're up. Nice, nice. Now Carson, this is the first time you've ever even put these on, isn't it? Yeah. The reason we popped up so hard is because we're out here in the desert and there's lots of dirt and dust and that can really get into your, uh, really get into your motors and stuff quickly, so we don't want to get that Holy in. Holy cow, Carson, you're exploring that place aggressively. What's your thoughts on the uh, the image? Um, the screen seems like it's a lot higher resolution than the Hobby King goggles. Okay. So it looks a lot better. Now this has a built-in receiver in it, so uh, that means you don't have to have the complicated gear. Like, even your Zeiss goggles have a wire, don't they? Yeah. I don't even know where you are. You're I'm running there. up the road like 50 miles an hour. <laughs> it's so that. fun. Where are you, Carson? I'm about halfway up the cliff, just diving down now. Holy cow. What are you flying? Uh, an Electro Hub. Nice. And you're doing the Spider Quad conversion, aren't yep. you? Yep. And I have the electronics from Ready to Fly Quads. Beautiful. It looks dialed in, brother. And you're doing a Flip 1.5 board? Yep. And what's your, uh, what's your gear that you're running for your... Uh, video link. Um, I'm using this, there's a Skyzone plug and play kit it's on Hobby King. Okay. So it's 500 milliwatt transmitter and then I have some, it comes with circular polarized antennas. So. Awesome. Now if you guys are wondering here, we can actually tap into immersion bands and also boss cam bands and uh, what did you say, Sky Zone? Yep. Sky Zone, there's four different bands we can tap through, so about 32 different channels that you can go through. We're able to go from immersion, change the bands, and tap into uh, Carson's here uh, with very little trouble. 
one thing I did notice flying these here is we're emerging the, the optics are very clear uh, looking through that uh, what's it called uh, amplifier or magnifier uh, it definitely kind of blows things out just a little bit and you can see come with it, some of that lens wrapping around you uh, but it is an incredibly clear image holy cow you're way up there Eric mm -hmm. a nice shot just kind of <laughs> circling the rocks here I'm going to try to do a nice reveal shot right around the edge of this I think Carson's racing up the side of the mountain right now. Yeah, it's awesome. We are in Utah right now in uh, the Valley of the Gods. And uh, we actually got an opportunity to go down and uh, show flight tests to the wonderful Utah State University uh, landing campus in a steam convention. And had a great time. We want to thank Ed especially for making that possible for us. Uh, but this place is absolutely incredible and a great place to explore. Is that leaf there on purpose, Eric? Mm -hmm. Is that leaf there on purpose? No, it's some uh, someone at the wonderful airport cracked my TV screen oh, on the that's way not here. That's a leaf. That's so. A <laughs> You're having like zero issues with reception, man. Yeah, I got that helical antenna, and I am telling you what, I cannot be happier. That thing is so solid. And then I have a Duo Diversity that I bought when we were in Florida. Um, I got that from the Get FPV guys while we were down there, and I'm I'm just having a ball with that. It's, it's really it's an good. amazing link, isn't it? Yeah. I guess it's like you're having a ball. It's awesome. It's pretty amazing. How does it even with the lower light, how does it look? It looks amazing. You're uh, just dipping down below the horizon. There. I went behind a rock and barely even lost signal. Wow. Kind of weird because I usually <laughs> kind of where he's running. I kind of like it's interesting to fly standing up. I usually sit down. Oh, do you? Yeah. I also usually sit down, so I'm having the same trouble. <laughs> kind of leaning a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and bring mine in for a landing here. Probably should too. You guys both got exceptional flight times off of yours. Are you flying the 2200? Yep. That's amazing. What's my timer say? Time to say? Uh, 21 seconds. Yep, gotta come in. <laughs> nice work, both of you. <sighs> that was awesome. You like it? <laughs> yeah. What no. do you think of them? Like I said before, the resolution is a lot higher than the the quantum goggles, so it just overall makes the experience better. It makes it more immersive. So more immersive. Yeah. You looked like it. You were diving down those yeah. cliffs. I came in from this other side, and I seen this thing just rocketing yeah. down the edge. Yeah. How was your How was your link? Was it pretty good? It was really solid the whole time. So you're all the way up there diving down the cliff face uh -huh. and getting a solid link. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, and the padding on the front is a lot more comfortable too, so that helps a lot. Yeah. Did, what about light leak? Did you get any no, light leak no. at all? Okay, that's awesome. So Carson was having such a He's blast. An amazing with the, pilot. Yeah, he was. I mean, he really surprised us. He had a little electro hub, little quad spider quad. Yeah. And he's diving down these cliffs and doing all this craziness, and it was it was just cool. He seemed like he really enjoyed flying this. And he hasn't been flying too long. He's only been flying for what about two years at the yeah, moment. Yeah, and I think FPV only like two or three months. Wow. And so it was really shocking. He yeah. was killing it. With different goggles comes different benefits. We sure. talked about that. Yep. Um, some things you want to consider is. Is, uh, the HD capabilities, the resolution, that kind of stuff, but also your field of view. You can have a very high resolution screen, very crisp, but a very narrow field of view. And what it's going to feel like is you're watching a cinema or a movie from very far away. Yeah. So if you can think about the wider, the, the larger the field of view, the more immersive it's going to be. This has a 72 degree field of view. Yeah. And that's about the same as most of the fast track models. Okay. The only difference is because the screen is a little bit farther away, you get a little bit more of the look around effect. Sure. But it is still very immersive. And some people may really like that and some people may not but the one other thing too is we had a couple people with glasses mm -hmm. able to actually put it on and if they had small rim glasses they were able to wear the glasses and yeah. put it right on their it face. has a lot of versatility I think it, yeah. you know being able to just have anybody able to pass that thing around and not be you know we're on the bottom of a fat shark you have to adjust those those yep. controls my cinemizers have those little adjustments yeah. where this thing you can just hand it to somebody and they can have an experience right away I felt a lot more secure uh, when I used to fly and we do FPV rides for kids I've had more than one set of goggles get damaged to the point where I have to take them apart yeah receive then, you know, kids start pushing on the lenses or they turn them up in the lights. Um, that's a very dangerous thing, a very difficult thing. And speaking of which, you can't turn this back up in the light. That magnifier will also burn out your screen as well, too. Sure. Um, but the nice thing about this is passing from person to person. It's very rugged, very yeah. light. Uh, although it looks huge, 
It's uh, it's actually it's remarkably very light. light. Yeah, that was the first thing I thought when I put it on. It was going to be this big, heavy. You know, yeah. you're going to be flying neck down the whole time. But it's yeah. you don't even hardly no notice that exactly. it's there. And flying FPV with it was very natural. Just a little bit different from the full immersion yeah. of feel. Frankly, I um, if if you had a budget of four to five hundred bucks, obviously I'd say go towards the Fat Sharks. But for this. $250, yeah. it's a really it's a steal, it really is. One of the things I'm super excited about, and especially when I bought my Cinemizer goggles all those years ago, was having the future of HD. Yeah. You know, everything we have is, you know, standard definition cameras and standard definition downlinking. And I bought those just so that I could almost future-proof myself, because I knew that was going to be coming soon. And then DJI came out with Lightbridge. I know there's the new Konix system that we're going to get to play with here yeah. soon. Um, Matter so of fact, we're going to use the Konix system in conjunction with, with this. And that's what's super exciting, to have a goggle you know, or, or an, an FPV solution at this price point that's got HDMI plugins built right into it. That's There's something to be said about that. It's amazing. Well, friends, we want to thank you for watching. It was really great getting to see some pre-production. Yeah. And uh, we also want to thank Get FPV because they're the ones that sent this down. And if you guys are interested in this, Get FPV is the exclusive distributor of this product. And I think that's like in the whole world. In the whole world. Yeah. It's crazy. That's so, awesome. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It was really great to see more technology and especially build that gap from very affordable DIY limited features to uh, the high end. It gives Tom one a stepping stone. So if you maybe start with this, you can find out that you fall in love with it and then yeah. step onto something more advanced. My feeling is that people are gonna get into this, get in the hobby, really fall to love it. And then this is gonna be part of their arsenal, but then they're gonna move on knowing that they enjoy it. Sure. So today's episode was sponsored by Audible.com, and Austin actually recommended the book today. Um, he's reading a book called The Dip. I thought he called me a dip earlier. Oh, <laughs> The Dip. The Dip, okay, yeah. The dip. So the book is The Dip by Seth Godin, okay. and it's basically um, you know, how sometimes there's highs and lows in your business, and, and basically if your business kind of hits a dip, you can uh, this this book kind of gives you some advice on whether to stay there or you know push forward so or, or it's quit. It's a book on assessing the dip. The, yes, exactly. Well, friends, we want to thank you. Because of you, we haven't experienced that dip, and I'm pretty confident we're going to continue to continue grow. forward friends we want to thank you for watching go to audible.com slash flight test get your free downloadable book we'll see you next time see you next time